Have you ever wondered how your performance on a task is affected by stress or anxiety? Today, we delve into the Yerkes-Dodson Law, a psychological principle that provides an answer. This intriguing theory, named after psychologists Robert Mearns Yerkes and John Dillingham Dodson, explores the fascinating relationship between arousal, or stress levels, and your performance on a task. Imagine an inverted U-shaped curve. On one end, we have low arousal levels, leading to subpar performance. As arousal increases, so does performance, reaching a peak at the optimal point of arousal. But here's the catch. If arousal continues to rise beyond this point, performance begins to falter. It's like a roller coaster ride, isn't it? So the key lies in finding that sweet spot of optimal arousal for peak performance. This law has seen widespread application across various fields, from neuroscience to education. The Yerkes Dodson Law's influence extends to different species and domains. Let's explore some of these applications. This psychological law is not exclusive to humans. It's been observed in our fellow earthlings too, such as rats and snails. In these different species, the Yerkes Dodson Law has offered valuable insights into how arousal impacts performance, helping us to understand the universal patterns of behavior. Now, let's bring it closer to home. In our everyday lives, stress and anxiety are often seen as enemies of productivity. But according to the Yerkes Dodson Law, it's not quite that simple. It suggests that moderate levels of stress or anxiety can actually enhance our performance. Picture this, you're faced with a task that requires concentration, perhaps a difficult puzzle, or an important presentation. Initially, a little stress sharpens your focus, your work improves. This is the upward slope of the inverted U-shaped curve. But what happens when stress levels continue to rise? If we're feeling overwhelmed, our performance begins to decline. This is the downward slope of the curve. In essence, the law tells us that there is an optimal level of stress or anxiety that can boost our productivity. But once we cross that line, it can have the opposite effect. The applications of this law don't stop at personal productivity. It's also highly relevant in the workplace. Understanding the relationship between stress and performance can help organizations to manage stress more effectively, optimizing overall performance. For instance, if a workplace is too relaxed, employees may lack motivation, leading to lower performance. On the other hand, if the workplace is overly stressful, employee performance may suffer. The trick is to find that sweet spot, the optimal level of stress that maximizes productivity without tipping over into burnout. Even in the realm of anxiety and working memory, a curvilinear relationship similar to the yerkes dodson law exists. Just like stress, a certain level of anxiety can enhance our working memory, but too much can hinder it. So the yerkes dodson law isn't just a psychological theory, it's a valuable tool for understanding and managing our performance in various areas of life. Like any theory, the yerkes dodson law has faced its share of criticisms and expansions. Some researchers have found inconsistencies in the relationship between arousal and performance, which the law presents as an inverted U-shaped curve. Some studies suggest that this relationship is not always curvilinear, but can be linear in certain contexts. This means that as arousal or stress levels increase, performance may not necessarily decrease, but can continue to improve or remain constant. This has led to debates in the psychological community, with some arguing that the yerkes dodson law may not apply universally across all tasks and individuals. The law's broadness has been both its strength and its weakness, allowing it to be applied in various fields, but also opening it up to criticisms for its lack of specificity. Recognizing these concerns, researchers have expanded the yerkes dodson law to include additional factors such as task difficulty, pleasure, and individual differences. For instance, the relationship between arousal and performance can vary depending on the complexity of the task at hand. Simple tasks may have a different optimal arousal level compared to complex tasks. Similarly, individual differences such as personality traits and coping strategies can affect how one responds to stress and anxiety, thus influencing performance. The law has also been linked to the concepts of eustress and distress. Eustress refers to positive stress, such as the excitement before a big game or presentation, which can enhance performance. On the other hand, distress refers to negative stress, such as chronic anxiety or fear, which can impair performance. This expansion of the yerkes dodson law further emphasizes the complexity of the relationship between arousal, stress, and performance. Despite these debates, the yerkes dodson law continues to offer valuable insights into the relationship between arousal, stress, anxiety, and performance. It encourages us to consider the nuanced ways in which these factors interact and influence each other, 
reminding us that the right amount of stress can be a powerful motivator, but too much can tip the scales in the wrong direction. The Yerkes-Dodson Law, though not without its critics, offers a fascinating look into the impact of stress and anxiety on our performance. This intriguing psychological principle, represented by an inverted U-shaped curve, illustrates the correlation between arousal or stress levels and task performance. At its core, the law suggests that there is an optimal point of stress or arousal that leads to peak performance. This law has been extensively applied across multiple fields, from psychology and neuroscience to education and occupational stress management. It has also sparked debates and criticisms, with some studies finding inconsistent or linear relationships between arousal and performance. Yet, despite the debates, the yerkes dodson law remains a valuable tool for understanding the complex relationship between stress, anxiety, and performance. It challenges us to find our own optimal point of stress for peak performance. As we conclude, ponder this. Have you noticed this law at play in your own life?